This is an 1884 Victor made in Chicopee Falls, Mass. It's one of the best bikes in the sale. It's a pretty original machine. Retains its brakes. Two headlights. Nice saddle on it. A rideable, a rideable machine. It's a special bike. This is a circa 1891 Elliott Hickory made in Newton, Mass. Another Massachusetts bicycle. Very early, rare youth size. Needs a, it needs a uh, chain, but otherwise it's a pretty strong bike. Appears to be an original saddle. Very nice bike. Uh, this machine is one of the rarest machines in the sale. It's the first Connecticut bone shaker that we've ever sold. It's made by J.A. Lakin, Thompsonville, Connecticut. It's signed on the bronze pedals. And I know that Lakin is listed in Connecticut as being in Thompsonville and later became a jeweler as far as we know. It has very unusual brakes. It's step brakes here. Normally you twist the handlebars to use the brakes. And this is an extraordinary design. Uh, and very historic because it's the only one I know from uh, from Connecticut. This is a very exotic bicycle. It's got a suspension innovation with a third wheel. It's a Rex made in Chicago, 1898, circa 1898. It has everything on it. It even has a pump and a cyclometer on the back here. Proper brakes. This is a very exotic and desirable machine. Brightwood made in New York with a wooden frame. Wooden frames are very, very desirable with these early pneumatic bicycles. Looks uh, what you might say barn fresh original. Retains brakes, cork grips here with nice ferrules on them. Proper saddle. The nickel plate has not been burnished, so it's you could touch that up. Appears to be original pedals. This is really a good machine, too. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important object that we've sold out of the Bergwart Museum. This is out of Ignat Schwinn's office, 1898. It was in the Schwinn family bicycle collection that was sold in Chicago by Leslie Einman. Uh, this was upstairs behind a bunch of nondescript frames when they sold it. And uh, the guy that got this really uh, made a score because this is an item that you can't, you just won't see another one. That's it. And um, we hope this does very well and ends up uh, in a good place. It's going to be a most treasured item, I would think, out of this sale. Very hard to estimate. Uh, the sky's the limit with this item. Okay. This is an 1898 wooden frame. We have a few of them in the sale, a couple of them in the sale. And it's the Lignum, made in Chicago by Frank McVeigh Company. Excellent example. Nickel plating on the gussets. Wonderful condition. Really a high-end bike. Proper saddle, proper handlebars. Really a desirable machine. This is a pretty unusual machine because it's all aluminum. And it's called aluminum. The uh, company that built it was the St. Louis Refrigerator and Wooden Gutter Company. An interesting name for the company. Um, very unusual cast, ornate chain guard, original pedals, 
wonderful woman's pneumatic safety. This is a Columbia chainless poster. It's one of the larger posters. That's uh, from Hartford, and the artist is J A. Romes. It's printed by uh, J. Ottman Litho Company in the Puck Building in New York. There was just an article in the Times about the Puck Building there. Um, good condition, and it's never been stamped for a dealer. There's a there's a blank space, so it's a uh, it's a great poster, right out of the museum. This appears to be a late 19th century railroad philosophy. Very unusual machine. Of course, we have new woodwork here, but this is all period woodwork in old green, uh, old red color. And, um, you know, it's an interesting item. It's, it has to go to a museum, I would think. I can't imagine anybody putting this in their living room, but it's one of those things that uh, Carl covered all history of bicycles. In this sale, you'll see a lot of New York State and New York City bicycle brands. He was an avid collector of New York material. This is a very rare bike. It's the first chain drive in America. They copied the kangaroo from Co uh, Coventry in England. And this is a Pope bike. I think this is probably one of the rarer high wheels, one of the rarer bikes in the sale, but definitely the rarest high wheel. Uh, first one I've ever seen. I mean, the only one I've ever seen was in this museum. This is a 1950s Hopalong Cassidy by Rollfast. Carl even had a mannequin dressed up with Hopalong Cassidy regalia. Has cap guns, saddlebags. It's a neat little restoration, neat bike. This is as high a quality Pierce as you'll find. Front leaf suspension. It's got the hygienic rear spring, shaft drive, and it's called the Pan American model. It's a nickel plated. We also have a Pan American Exposition flyer there, and I'm sure this is one of Carl Bergwart's pride and joy bikes. This was a great model. They call these cushion frames. This is a circa 1888 star made in Smithville, New Jersey. It has a very unusual ratchet drive with a leather strap. You push down and then it returns, push down and returns. These are called safety high wheels. Uh, if you hit a stone with a high wheel bike, you went over the handlebars, did a header. These prevented headers. And they were pretty comfortable to ride, uh, but it's a tough bike to get on and off of. Bob Jameson restored this bike. He's with the premier restorer in this country. Uh, what a job. This is a stunning example. It's a Paragon. And uh, great suspension. Wonderful lines with this bike. It's just a, it's a 10. It's just a wonderful bike. A wonderful shipping crate. It was called the Protector Bicycle Crate. Ellison and Freckleton, New York City. Um, has a bike inside it. I don't know if that bike was in there originally, but what a great thing. It's signed right here by the makers. Very good condition. Another oddity, another museum piece.
an iconic twin black phantom, and it's on a store display so the child could get up on it and ride. This is a very uh, interesting bicycle too, Huffy radio bike. It's got a radio right inside the center tube here. Um, Huffman Manufacturing Company, Dayton, Ohio. A very good example too. Along with an original poster for this bike. So you can, if they, whoever buys it should buy that too. That's a good, uh, a good combination right there. A rear bike too. This is a nice collection of steins. There's some Metlac steins here. And um, this is just a partial look at some of the steins that came out of that museum. Uh, we've been selling them three sales now. This happens to be a particularly nice Metlac stein. This showcase is just full of great memorabilia. These are easels, mirrors or photographs, one behind them, Mary Gregory style glass, bottles with embossed high wheels on them. Uh, these are old cast bells, tin types with cyclists. Down here we have some uh, street razors and they're all engraved with bicycle logos printing blocks, name badges. These are a real big time collectible for the bicycling hobby. License plates. Everybody likes those license plates. Pin back buttons, tools, something for everybody at, at this sale, I would say. This sale has a lot of photographs. We have uh, a group family here shot with uh, high wheels. There's a factory shot here. Here's a famous shot. The guy's doing a header and landing on his face. Um, plenty of postcards and uh, catalogs. Ephemeral items are, are very important to save for historical content. There's a lot of metals racing medals. These are stereo cards, a whole collection of stereo cards to sell as one lot. This is an Ingo bike. It's basically a scooter with an egg-shaped wheel for perpetual motion. Pretty interesting. There's factory promotional stuff here. A picture of Victor McLaughlin, the actors. I remember him from Gunga Den. Helen Morgan. Pretty cool. Amos and Andy. This is a very unusual bike and a lot of fun to ride. There's a lot of early 20th, late 19th century tandems, including a Pierce racer. And um, they're all up against this wall. Some of them in as-is condition, some of them need a little restoration, some of them are ready to go. Okay. These are new old stock bicycles in the crates. They're not very old, they're mostly reproduction bikes. But they are very collectible and they're great if you do rides. They're in here, they've never been out. This is an Alano, which is a ratchet drive. Columbia's. This is a Coca-Cola bike right here. In the back there, Huffy made. This is a Red Phantom, 1950s Red Phantom. We also have a Black Phantom and a Green Phantom. One of the more iconic balloon tire bicycles. We have a large collection of uh, lamps in this sale. They're all over the place in showcases. And this completes a restoration for an 1890s or a turn of the century bicycle. Up here is from an old uh, Schwinn store. It has a five speed demonstrator for the shifter.
This showcase is just full of interesting things. There's a cyclist shaving mug, a German bisque statue, a trophy, hub lamps which go on high wheels. They go right in the middle of the high wheel on the uh, center hub. This is a dog scarer pistol right there used by the uh, early cyclists to, with blanks to scare off dogs. Uh, cyclometer that goes on a high wheel. Down here we have a tea set engraved as a trophy. A whole collection of interesting carbide and oil lamps. And then over here more cyclometers some early Staffordshire figures, they call these little ones fairings. And this is all period collectible bicycle item. Okay. This is a very interesting cycling scrapbook. Turn of the century racers. Some of them are identified. These are six-day racers, probably Madison Square Garden. This is a Schwinn Trophy. Ignaz Schwinn. This trophy was sold in Chicago at the... Uh, Schwinn family sale. It's a nice picture. They're braced together. Nice crash scene. Well, there are eight high wheels here. If, if you want a high wheel, I guess you could buy one from 15 or 1800, 2000 to 10,000 on this line. So I guess there's one for every pocketbook uh, if you're a serious buyer for high wheels. Right. The Monarch Silver King's a pretty interesting bike. This is a BSA, Birmingham Small Arms. Um, a black phantom. This is an eagle made in Torrington, Connecticut. This is a, a Pope bike, a Columbia bike. Schwinn Paramount, a Shelby Ideal. These are all collectible models. There's a red and a green ladies phantom, Schwinn phantom. This is called a Victor Victoria, which is pretty interesting. A flat tank motorbike. They wanted the children to think motorcycle when they saw these. That was a selling point for these bikes. Nice Columbia. This is the modern middleweight period here. A Roadmaster jet pilot. These are becoming very collectible. Two stowaway bikes. This is a Roadmaster Ladies original paint. Pretty original bike. We have a lot of hard tire safeties, a lot of really collectible ones. I call that a hairspring. That's similar to the spring you see on a Ducati uh, motorcycle for the valves. Nice, nice grill for the skirt guard. Neat bike. Uh, we talked about this one before. Again, suspension. This is a Jameson restoration. A 
a Spalding nonpareil, really a, a nice little youth model, boys or girls. This is a race bike, Crescent number one. Stunning restoration, really a neat thing. Look at the wheels, they have, they're red and gray. Pinstripes match the wheels. Great bike. This is a pneumatic safety. It still has a sidewalk badge on it. Beautiful nickel plating, great restoration. This is a Hartford Cycle Company. Hope had some empire, look at that. We've had these before. This is a little stained, but that can be taken out. That can be restored. And again, this is a youth hard tire safety. Very, very hard to find model. We don't get too many of these. This is a real interesting bike. It's a new male that was made in Boston. And look at the seat. It's got a cantilevered drive unit there hanging out. But that's an interesting saddle, is it? Not? Look at the rear brakes. It's got the very, very early rear brakes. Band goes right around and clamps on it to stop the bike. Very interesting bike. These showcases on this wall are full of really historic items. There's lots of ribbons, 1892, what are some of the dates on these? 1893, 1897. These were given out during the rides for the wheelmen. In here are buttons for a wheelman's uniform. Pin back buttons describing different companies for advertising. There's match safes here with all bicycle logos. Here's a necktie box made out of celluloid with bicycle logos on it. Early transferware mug with children on velocipedes and a Young America safe bank. It's in the form of a safe. Mechanic, it's not a mechanical bike, it's a still bank, I should call it. More cyclometers down here. And we have a lot of uh, very collectible head badges. Early tools, spoke tools mostly, and these are early bells, 19th century bells. And down in the bottom of the case are a bunch of side path licenses. Kids used to have to pay and get their bike inspected, and they would put these little licenses on their bikes. And they're from all over the U.S. Up here we have a bunch of French plates that show humorous poses early bicycling. They're all transfer wear. I think this is a Lindbergh style plane, like a Spirit of St. Louis pedal car. And I have Shane here and Sage, my grandson and my son. And they like this, huh guys? Is this cool? Yeah. What do you think, Sage? Yeah. Very cool. We've got a mannequin dressed up in a bomber jacket. I think we have what, something for everybody here. Hello. Hello there. Hey, uh, <laughs>